trace me new life did he give each of my heart does my savior now live his love and the trace me new life did he give each of my heart does my savior now live his love and the trace me new life did he give each of my heart does my savior now live his love and the trace me new life Aloha, everybody. Welcome back to For Such a Time as This with KonaFaithCenter.org. And I'm so glad to be back with you because I'm really wanting to finish this message about agreement, although it may take a third time. So just follow along every week. Stop the recording. Write the scriptures down or just read them as I'm talking because it, it will get into your spirit being, not just your mind, not just seeing it with your eyes, but get it deep down inside. So thank you for your subscription if you haven't subscribed and your thumbs up. We appreciate it. All right. My next point on agreement is never, absolutely never, ever, 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 ever agree with the enemy. Agreeing with non-believers is agreeing with the enemy. What? You're calling non-believers the enemy? I'm not calling them the enemy, but they have the enemy speaking into their lives and speaking into their minds and into their emotions. So their decisions are often not made. They can't be made godly. If they don't know Jesus and aren't walking with Jesus, then you are actually not making an agreement with them. You're making an agreement with the enemy. And let's talk about this. It says in Exodus 23, 22, and 23. That's where I'm going to start. You shall make no covenant with them or with their gods, little g. We know there's no such thing as other gods, but idolatry, little gods. They shall not live in your land because they will make you sin against me. For if you serve their gods, it will surely be a snare to you. And I'll tell you people, I have seen this over and over and over again. And it's just an amazing thing that people will turn away from the living God to worship their culture, to worship little idols, to worship walls, to worship all kinds of things. Because if you don't operate in the mind of Christ with the leading of the Holy Spirit, it's very easy to believe false information. You know, they talk about all the false information online. Well, what they keep from online is usually the truth. And what they put up there is usually false because it's the world. And I'm not saying every time. I'm just saying it happens. All right, let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And I'm going to start in verse 15. Or what harmony has Christ with Belial? Belial is a demon or what has a believer in common with an unbeliever? And this is so important, ladies that are single, men that are single, marry a believer, like-minded like you. Not just a believer, but one that is like-minded with you. Verse 16, or what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God, just as God said, I will dwell in them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. We need the Holy Ghost dwelling in us, and we don't want to make agreements, Holy Ghost, to devils. So I'm not calling people devils. I'm just saying they're influenced by devils unless they are actually possessed, which happens. Okay, let's look at verse 17. Therefore, come out from their midst and be separate says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean, and I will welcome you. Well, what does it mean, don't touch? It's not like the old days where you couldn't touch a carcass or you couldn't touch somebody who died to check and see if they're alive by checking for a pulse or that kind of thing. It means don't touch their lifestyle. Don't be a part of their lifestyle. That's how important it is, because if you are connecting with their lifestyle, you are agreeing with the enemy. In verse 18, and I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters to me, says the Lord God Almighty. Now, is it possible for God to have sons and daughters that are demons? Absolutely not. 
absolutely not. He has no partaking with evil. None. Okay. So agreeing with the enemy is agreeing with a lie. Let's look at John 8, 44 to 47, New American Standard Bible. You are of your father, the devil, and you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. None. Zero. Nada. We're Whenever he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies. So just as Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, Satan is filled with lies. That's all he speaks. He's very manipulative with them, too. All right, verse 45. But because I speak the truth, you do not believe me. This is Jesus speaking. Which one of you convicts me of sin? Nobody could because he didn't commit sin. I speak truth. Why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears the words of God. For this reason, you do not hear them because you are not of God. You know, I, I'm not getting political about this. I just want to say something. If you look at the evidence within the Biden family versus the Trump family, you tell me, where there's lies and where there's favorability. Just saying. All right, and the next point is always agree with God. Agreeing with God's word is agreeing with God. Let's look at John 1, starting in verse 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. He's the creator. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. And the darkness cannot comprehend it, because as soon as you turn on light, darkness disappears, as we all know. John 1 and 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we saw his glory. Glory is of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. You see the opposing factors here? The devil is a liar, and Jesus is all truth. There isn't a lie in him. Revelation 19 and 13. He is clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Without the shedding of blood, there is no sacrifice of sin. And Jesus, the Lamb of God, as he's often called, shed his blood on behalf of all and said, it is finished. Agreeing with God's word opens up every good gift and promise that the Lord God has for us. Let's look at Matthew 18, 19, and 20. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth about anything, that they may ask, it shall be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. For where two or three have gathered in my name, I am there in their midst. So Jesus is with us. If we're in a family of two or three and we're gathered in the name of Jesus, we're praising him, we're worshiping him, we're thanking him. If a group of people is discussing how awesome he is in the church, anywhere that we are in a group of two or three, Jesus is with us because we have the Holy Spirit of God and Jesus is amongst us. Let's look at Matthew 7, 7 and 8. And this is the last scripture for today and then we'll be finished with this lesson of agreement. It says in 7, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. And he who seeks find, finds, sorry, and to him who knocks, it will be open. People keep agreeing with God. Be in agreement. Agree with people of God as long as they're speaking the word of God, speaking the truths of God. We need to be in agreement. Now, you're going to have to sign agreements with people in the world like the mortgage company and like the, the auto company 
or a landlord, but make sure that you are signing agreements with reputable businesses, not something because you think you're going to get a better deal. God takes care of you, so you don't have to worry about the better deal because he's the best deal. God bless you. See you next time. You alone, Lord, made me a brand new creation. It is only by a spirit could